I'm just quickly waiting one more minute to see if there's more people that want to join and then I'll start the webinar. All right, I need at least one person, please, to just let me know in the chat box if you can see my screen and that you can hear me clearly. All right, thank you very much. It seems like everyone can hear me. Right. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very, very much for joining <coughs> my webinar today. Um, my name is Tian Rabi. I'm the product design and manufacturing specialist working for Baker Baines. Today, we will talk a little bit about automation with Autodesk Inventor and how it will benefit you in your company or maybe not you but someone else in your company right this is not just a technical um, webinar we'll talk a little bit or well, I'll touch on sales as well and um, yeah hopefully it will be very informative for you today so before we jump into anything I'm gonna go through the agenda with you guys first now, the first thing I always do in all of my webinars is I want to tell you a little bit more about who Baker Baines is, what we do, um, why are we good at what we do, and etc. Then I'll talk, talk a little bit about parametric, parametric modeling and specialized tool sets, understand the levels of automation, and then also look at all the different automation tools in Inventor. Um, embed the rules directly into your part or assemblies and also your um, drawing documents. And then you can also provide your colleagues or um, your sales reps, etc., with an intuitive interface. Then we'll go a little bit further into your automation strategy with the Inventor API. Now, API stands or uh, is uh, short for Application Programming Interface and then also the extended capabilities. And then I'll leave a little bit of time um, open for some questions, if you guys have any. Right. Right, it seems like there's one person that can't see my screen. Um, let me just quickly look at the audience view, just hold on. All right, on my side, it's showing that the audience view is 100%. Um, Morna, you can quickly let me know if you can see my screen now, maybe. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All right, guys, let's continue. The first thing I want to talk about to you is Baker Baines. Baker Baines has evolved over the past five years from being an Autodesk reseller to a consulting company. We, and we set out to solve customer problems through digital transformation, helping you guys um, design and make a better world. In doing so, we offer various business process improvement consulting services and also survey and design hardware and consulting. With design software consulting and that all topped off with a blended learning approach to how we believe our customers can or should digest their information. Right, then we have these different industries that we specialize in. Now we have um, the build industry as well. We have civil energy, manufacturing, where I specialize in, and then also process plant and mining. And then at Baker Baines, we have a consulting methodology. It's called I Adopt. Now these are the um, consulting methodologies we like to send or um, explain to our clients 
that we want you guys to adopt, where we assess, we educate, and we consult you, the people in your company, and the, the programs and the processes. So what is iAdopt? It's been developed using years of experience, and iAdopt is a consulting methodology to help clients to develop and implement a digital strategy, to optimize um, business processes and workflows, and also adopt the technology. So in other words, if you adopt or you buy um, Autodesk Vault or Inventor or AutoCAD, etc., that's when you adopt the technology. We assess your company where we also like to see this. These are the main areas where you should focus on and spend more time on and um, where you might lack in a little bit of um, productivity. And then we educate you, give you training, and then you buy the software from us. That is I adopt. So let's jump right into the, the, the webinar. So the future of making. Now, some of you guys that joined previous presentations <clears throat> might have seen this slide before. Some of you have heard of us talking about it. So the future of making. Design automation is one of the best examples, in my opinion, of this concept. And here's why. So it's because it touches on all three of the core elements of the future of making. If you go in on the, the more aspect, people are requiring and demanding more products based on their custom needs. In the less aspect, the more you make, the fewer resources you have available to work on real design and engineering innovation. Automation is about reducing the amount of time your engineers um, are spending on tedious tasks so that they can focus on um, important work. Then, lastly, automation represents an, uh, um, an opportunity to do everything better and faster for your entire product development cycle, all the way from sales to shipping the final product. So again, design automation um, checks off all the boxes for the three aspects of the future of making, more, less, and better. But these are the common business challenges that a lot of people face. So let's face it, the world is ever changing thanks to technology. If you don't welcome these changes, if it's in your personal life or in your company or you as a person, then you risk being left behind. In order to survive, businesses need to pursue um, strategies which reduce the costs and save time and increases efficiency. Your most valuable asset is the people you work with. People come and they sometimes go as well. How do you ensure that the knowledge is going to stay with you if the people leave? You don't want to build someone up with knowledge and then they leave and then you are left behind with absolutely nothing. And leverage it with other employees in your organization. So why? Why do we want to automate? Now, the level set on design automation. What is it? Basically, it means to help you and those around you get more things done in a lot less time. Then what, what you do with um, that time, that extra time that you have le left, that's up to you. You can innovate more or simply get started early on the next project, uh, project. For some, it's also about winning more bids for customizable products or getting your design to manufacturing faster, which I've, I'm sure all of us that's actually listening to this webinar really want to do. You want the projects to get done much faster so that you can at the end of the day get in more business more projects to get in more money but also not decrease the time in spending on your um, project projects and BIM compliance is an example of automating tasks if you need BIM ready designs there are ways to create them without the manual effort of simplification um, data entry and exporting the file so a few notes to note. <clears throat> you can improve the design efficiency. You can automate uh, repetitive tasks. You can um, produce consistent and inaccurate documentation. Integrate processes. You can get products out of the door faster, which all of us want. You can win more business. Again, all of us want that. Customer appreciation, which is always nice to have, and also return business. Now, levels of automation. 
this is seen throughout your organization, which includes everything from um, improving design efficiency to connecting business systems for the entire company. Throughout this presentation, we'll talk about automate, um, automation at all of these levels. This means everything from personal software use to your team level tasks, all the way to company-wide initiatives like connecting engineering and business systems. We are going to speak to all three of these categories. So we have Inventor, which is first. Now the design automation is something that grows with you as an engineer and as a company. Everything you do, big or small, has a positive impact. It is also scalable. The work you do today, even on a small project, can later be re um, repurposed for the next level in automation. You never lose the work you put into a project. All right, now we will talk about parametric modeling, specialized tools, new product configurations, um, cell enablement, extend capabilities, and also corporate initiatives. So the first thing, core inventor. So let's begin at a fundamental level of design and automation in 3D modeling and the specialized tools available in Autodesk Inventor. So we can see that we have parametric modeling and specialized tools that we will cover first. So firstly, parametric modeling. Using Inventor is not just about moving from a 2D world over to a 3D world. It's about designing your concepts and ideas more efficiently. In order to do that, there has to be some sort of automation involved. Design intent, for example, enables you to predict how your, your parts and your assemblies will behave. Inventor provides you um, an opportunity to describe your model or your build intelligence into it so that the inevitable uh, changes happen the way you expect them to. And those changes propagate to downstream applications like drawings, analysis, and CAM tool paths, all updated according to your modifications to the geometry. Right. Then we get specialized tools in Inventor. Also, specialized tools are available for several model um, types, including sheet metal um, designs, which you can see there, that's a sheet metal design, and also plastic part design, which you can see there on the top. That's a plastic model. These features make it easier to model in 3D and provide all the engineering criteria for the bend allowance. So you know your parts are accurate according to the machines used to make them. There are plastic part features that are specifically designed to make modeling faster, such as a boss feature for fastness. Lip and groove features are often part of the plastic part design and is done quickly in Inventor. Now, there's the snap feature for common shapes for snap fits between components. Those are just a few of the examples of um, features that are going to make plastic part design more of a design task rather than a 3D modeling challenge. So take a look at some of the features included with sheet metal design in this next um, short video that I'm going to show you now. All right, so Autodesk Inventor has tools specifically for the design and development of sheet metal components. These tools follow the standards you define, such as sheet metal thickness, bends, corners, treatments, and unfolding. Um, rules to ensure your design meets manufacturing requirements. You can see there's bending right now. Commands such as um, flange or hem and fold automate the creation process of standard sheet metal features. You can see that in this video, he's busy doing all of that, what I just mentioned. Right, now we get to the punch tool. Now the punch tool, um, corner seam and corner treatments ensure that when you're modifying your designs, that they continue to follow your sheet metal standards and your standard 3D modeling tools such as um, rectangular pattern and mirror allow for quick development of sheet metal components. When you're ready to create a flat pattern, Inventor does all the calculations for you. Again, based on your manufacturing standards, ensuring you have an accurate 2D profile for downstream use. Autodesk Inventor provides you, uh, you um, 
tools to easily document both your folded and your flat patterns. When you're ready to share your designs with manufacturing, you could create a simple DXF or you could take advantage of inventory nesting to automatically create nests of your flat components. And I also just want to mention quickly before we carry on, inventory nesting automatically groups components of um, similar materials, types and thicknesses into individual sheets, right? So sheets can be defined to match the material you have on hand for creative components. So inventor nesting then automatically calculates the nesting um, efficiency based off the parameters of um, and, and options you define such as mirroring, spacing um, and rotating maybe. And also the inventor sheet metal and nesting tools inside of the product design and manufacturing collection allow you to more quickly develop the accurate sheet metal components and better connect your designs to downstream manufacturing processes. Right, now we can continue. All right, now there's more in, um, inside specialized tools. So we have weld frame design only. It requires only you to build a wireframe and select structural profiles for them. So even solve your weld frame in seconds using the beam elements. So I'm sure some of you might be very familiar with this part already, um, which you know saves you a lot of time to use exactly that um, tool. You also have tube and pipe contains, um, you know, that contains all the, the hardware you need for applying your roots for rigid pipes, um, also for bent tubes and flexible um, hoses. Just draw the root wireframe and specify the material and components that are um, included. All right, so here we can see in this image, they designed this with a wireframe, both of these images actually. So there's a pipe and this one with um, the welding frame that they created. So again, I'm going to show you a quick little video and then we can run through everything. So the nature of um, structural frame design with standard frame profiles and corner treatments makes it relatively simple yet tedious modeling task that's perfect for automation. Autodesk Inventor makes frame design simple with tools specifically created to make inserting frame members, um, applying in treatments and analyzing the performance of the frames fast. So let's take a look, right? So again, starting with the parametric skeleton geometry for the frame, you can begin inserting frame members by specifying the family, um, the size and the material from a library containing thousands of uh, you know, standard profiles. Then Inventor gives you the complete control over the placement of each member. So you can see here that he's placing the um, member on a specific axis. It picks the sketches, edges or points to, positions, uh, to position your frame members with options to offset or also rotate the frame profile relative to the geometry selected. And then once the size and the placement of the frame member are determined, the frame member are inserted into the assembly and automatically numbered based on your preferred file name and part numbering scheme. As you add more frame members into the design, corner treatments can be used to trim, miter or create notches between the members and end caps can be inserted from the content center to terminate free ends. The standardized nature of frame design also makes it easy to set up and perform structural analysis. Um, to make sure your design performs as required, just add your constraints. For example, um, where the frame is basically fixed to the floor, you can start specifying where the loads will be applied to. Loads can be applied as a point um, forces, axial uh, moments, or continuous loads across the length of the frame members. The solve time for frame analysis is super quick, so you can immediately begin reviewing displacement and stress results to determine if further design um, refinement is required. And then again, just want to mention, with automated commands for designing structural frames and a simple to use analysis environment to make sure your designs will perform to the um, requirements Inventor gives you to prof uh, professionally grade tools, you need to get frame design done much faster. 
All right, then we get to <clears throat> the content center. Now, I've, I'm sure almost all of you guys are very familiar with the content center and knows exactly what it does. Now, purchase components are the last thing you want to spend time modeling for your assemblies. Inventor has you covered. So choose from hundreds of thousands of standard components for your design, even um, use our um, design accelerators to create specialized components like gears, you can create um, bearings and also cans. It also contains uh, engineering calculate, um, calculators that are built inside of Inventor. All the most um, important tools you need from your machinery handbook. Now again, for this short little video, I'm going to quickly show you. You don't want to spend time modeling standard components like nuts and bolts, and you don't have to. The Autodesk Inventor Content Center allows you to generate over, and I'm sure you saw that now earlier on the previous slide, over 750,000 standard components from fasteners to shaft components and from rooted systems to structural steel. The Content Center libraries cover 18 international standards, including ISO, ANSI, and DIN. In addition to the standard components um, included, you can also publish your own parts and manage them with the content center. So let's see content center in action. So in this example, um, you could have seen that parts are inserted directly from content center. And then also notice how the parts automatically size themselves to suit the, the, the feature selected. Once inserted, content center parts can be resized or redefined from the library and contain all the information needed to automatically populate your bill of materials. Content Center supports inventors design accelerators, a collection of rule-based design tools that allow you to quickly generate components around your functional um, requirements. Right now you can also, you can add fastness or a design frame, um, power transmissions of a spring system directly from Content Center components. No need to model any parts yourself. In the Inventor rooted system environment, Content Center provides components for your piping runs and cable harnesses. Design mechanical systems, which include um, flexible or rigid piping routes, um, using your existing geometry as a reference. And Content Center supplies houses, pipes, um, hoses, pipes, tubes, and industry standard pipe fittings, such as flanges and couplers. Design electromechanical systems, which are linked to your AutoCAD electrical schematics. Populate your design using the AutoCAD electrical data and Content Center's linked library of um, the components. Now, you want to spend your time engineering um, and designing, not modeling. Autodesk Inventors Content Center libraries save you time and effort. It reduces the modeling time, which we all want, increase the standardization, and make use of Inventors Design Accelerators with Autodesk Inventor Content Center. Now, we always like to ask our clients, do you have uh, a standard in your company because this is a really big point that you can focus on in your in your company so it will help you like you can see in all of these videos if you have a standard in your company use them and then you'll see the productivity will be much faster new product configurations so now that we spoke about the automation tools for design um, let's take it up a level and Inventor offers the ability to capture the engineering rules of your design so that you can make reuse and um, you know you can you can reuse it to make the new rapid um, configurations in your company. So a growing number of companies and individual inventor users are witnessing the power of implementing iLogic in their daily activities to improve their efficiency, not just in design, but also um, in manufacturing software that works in Inventor. Now, <clears throat> making changes to your design is easy when you include good design intent. You can make it even easier by specifying values that are open for change. You always have to be open for change, right? This is when you 
increase, but when you get better. Um, and also like the first point that you can see there in front of you is when you can get your designs to manufacturing much faster. Right. And that's, like I said again, that's what all of us want. That's why you guys joined this webinar to see how you can do all of this. So let's look at this next video. Um, product configurators have been proven to save engineering time and accelerate sales growth of custom products. So in the past, setting up the rules and logic behind a configurator and making it accessible to sale, uh, sales reps and engineers often required specialized programming knowledge, significant investments in um, development and a lot of time. With Inventor, however, setting up and deploying a product configurator has never been easier. First, you must define the logic behind the configurator. This is easy to code with Inventor iLogic technology. Next, once logic has been defined, you can create forms inside Inventor to provide a more intuitive um, front end for the configurator. Right, simply select which parameters or rules and um, I properties you want to available for the configuration, and they are automatically added to your form. No prog programming required. They can be grouped um, together on the form or separated into different tabs for better organization. You can even add text and pictures to provide instructions or describe the parameters. All right, like you can see, you added a logo there. Now, with the product configured um, unique customer requirements, um, it may require additional fine tuning. Inventor Nastran is integrated directly inside the CAD environment. So you can quickly perform advanced stress fatigue and thermal analysis to evaluate the um, performance of the desired design. iLogic can also automate the entire process of setting up, running, and post-processing the simulation, which reduces the time it takes to get to the actionable results. Then just quickly again, automated design and configuration process helps you get from design to manufacturing faster. In other words, with rules-based design, you can deliver custom products faster and improve your bottom line. Right, now we get to the sales enablement. So <clears throat> if you are a designer watching this presentation, have you ever been taken away from your work to make a change to an existing design for a bit of customer? I'm sure there must be someone there. And I know for a fact, in my previous experience, that happened to me as well. You can greatly reduce that by creating a form so everyone can make design changes, even if that person doesn't have access to Inventor or they don't use Inventor. Right. Now, some, for some of you, this is an uh, on occurrence that happens quite often. Did you know that uh, you can empower others to do this work for you? Right. So even if they don't know how to use Inventor, it creates forms that are easy to use so they can do the work on their own. You may even prefer to use the forms yourself. So within the form, establish constraints and ranges so users don't configure something that your um, company doesn't make. As a salesperson, you can be con um, confident that the configurations that are generated from the form will produce a design that you um, know can be manufactured at the end of the day. Then we get to the desktop APIs with extended um, capabilities. Now with Inventor API and Visual Basic.net, the possibilities to automate become endless. You can go beyond configuration, new designs to automating engineering processes. The API is very powerful. It provides the ability to automate almost anything you see in the user interface of um, Inventor. So why is the Inventor API so powerful? It takes you beyond the basics. Automate repetitive tasks, it sets up um, design rules, it um, checks the drawings, ERPs and MRP integrations, and it lets you create your own add-in 
for Inventor. Right, your own add-in for Inventor. Then we get to corporate initiatives. Now, for a long time, Autodesk Inventor has had the powerful automation tools that we have been discussing. Now, we are taking all the capabilities that we placed on the desktop and making it available on the Forge platform, right? So, and now we are on the design automation APIs on Forge for Inventor, where we can create a complete custom experience for your customers and automate your entire product development process from sales, um, purchasing the raw material, designing the work, manufacturing, and you know, all the way to getting your, your product out of the door. It makes your, uh, your entire process more efficient. So automating workflows and processes increases productivity, reduces errors, and saves the costs. Now you can automate your inventor processes in the cloud to achieve collaboration and automation at scale. All right, so we work from the cloud now. Today's products design and manufacturing, in short DNA, um, environment is hindered by disconnected experiences, also technology and data, especially when collaborating across departments and firms. Now, with the push to drive innovation and shorten time to market, many customers want to move away from the disconnected um, waterfall operating models of today to a future that supports more concurrent, integrated and automated workflows one supported by a robust cloud data platform. So you can hear what I just said there. A lot of the people want to move away from the old ways. More and more and more companies today adopt these new capabilities that they can adopt um, to help their, their process and the operation in the, company, in the company to go much faster so that they can get more money in and get um, more clients at the end of the day. As Inventor moves towards the connected future, find out how Forge data enables um, anyone along the DNM pipeline to collaborate on the data they need from anywhere at the, at the same time with the appropriate level of control as well. And you can also explore how you might easily plug in your apps and your services to a platform that connects information and people across the design and manufacturing um, workflows. So on-premises and Forge, the design automation API provides the ability to use the core APIs of your favorite CAD engines in the cloud, leveraging the scale of the Forge platform to run automated jobs. These jobs could be highly repetitive or frequent, or could be larger problems that need large scale processing power. With the Design Automation API, you can offload that processing to the Forge platform, which can process these jobs at a much greater scale and um, efficiency. Imagine you have customers con um, continuously submitting orders for your custom configurations of your product. Using Design Automation for Inventor, plus your own custom code and iLogic rules, you can set up an automatic responder to receive these orders and prepare initial documents and models for engineers to fine tune or to um, validate. The automatic handler can modify parameters in part files and assembly files and update relevant drawing files doing all the preliminary processing in the cloud and also delivering initial documents to engineers desktops. Engineers can spend their time on the creative, um, unique or difficult aspects of each job rather than wasting their time on repetitive documenting, um, document copying. And then Design Automation API for Inventor provides access to the full Inventor API, which is the server only, including the functionality, such as modifying the parameters and um, features in part files, also configure the components in assembly files, update and fine tune the IDW or the drawing files, and also use iLogic rules or custom code, operate on um, common static files or um, per job files, and then also lastly providing the results 
in any inventor support formats. Now, Forge Design Automation API for Inventor, again, provides a mean to automate time consuming and again, repetitive tasks. All right, so. They remove the manual and error prone efforts, which saves time and enables a faster response with a higher level of consistency. Forge powers insights and workflows, right? Through Forge powered web, um, pages and mobile apps. Now visualize your better decision making. Organize for fast and efficient decision making. You can connect people and systems and then connect the data, federate data across the systems and without installing any software. Um, you can automate your tasks. You can speed up your responsiveness to customers internal and externally like um, creation of drawings required but it takes a lot of hours. Right, so you can see here again, you configure, you can export, and then you can generate. Then the basic concept is data from any device, and it can be fed into these um, engines on Forge, not just for inventors. So the API is fully functional, um, for other Autodesk applications as well. So we can see here, Forge is functional in its inventor, Autodesk Inventor, in Autodesk AutoCAD, in 3DS Max, and also in Revit. Now, I know a lot of you guys might not even use Revit, but if you know about Revit or you have Revit in your company, you know that Forge are capable in um, working with it as well. Then for the conclusion, now, to recap the slide you saw earlier, you saw this one a little bit earlier in the webinar. The things you do to automate your processes come in all different sizes. And remember that the work you do today can be repurposed for larger scale automation projects later. You never lose the effort to put into the, you put into the, the things you do now. Autodesk Inventor has you covered in the automation strategy. So again, if someone leaves your company with knowledge, you don't lose that knowledge. You have it in your company. All right, then questions. You can see my email address there on the bottom, you guys. Um, if you have any specific questions that you might want to know that you need to ask or pricing or wanting to buy software or wanting to know anything about this webinar as well, you can send me an email, tianatbakerbanks.com and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so I see there is one question already. How do I work with parameters in Inventor? Um, well, parameters is actually, it's very easy. We do explain how to work with parameters in training, um, Auto, um, Autodesk Inventor advanced training. So parameters basically just in short um, is if you create one part, and I'm gonna use the example of a flange, right? So if you have a flange, and you want one flange, but in, 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 in a lot of different sizes. So you want the overall diameter or the bolt sizes or the PCD of this flange to change every now and then. You can create one drawing, one 3D model. And as you create this 3D model, you add your parameters, your sizes, right? Then at the parameters table, you insert the amount of rows you need. So the amount of flanges that you might use and you specify the sizes in that table. And as soon as you are done with that table and you insert them, you can open the, para the um, parameter table and select the sizes that you want. And then your 3D model will update automatically. All right, I hope that answers your question. And then we work with sheet metal and we want to create our own punch tool pattern. Is that possible? That is possible, most definitely, yes. Um, in Inventor, you can create your own pattern or your own drawing, 2D drawing, and you can save it as a punch tool. And then when you are in sheet metal and you use the punch tool and you insert the pattern that you want to punch through the sheet metal, your drawing will be there. You just have to save it in a specific way in the correct um, file then your punch tool that you create can be there. So you can create your own custom punch tools. Yes, most definitely you can do that. Right. All right, guys. Um, 
no more questions. I'm going to then just go to the next slide quickly. I just quickly want to mention to you guys our support desk. We are open from Mondays to Fridays at 8 a.m. to 11.30 at night. We do have an after hours support. Um, if you want to email our support desk, the email is there, support at bakerbanks.com with your issue that you have. Um, and then also you can call us um, on the number that you can see there on the screen. When it comes to support, we only see support as application errors, or if you have an issue with um, a function that doesn't want to work on your application. As soon as you have a question about how to questions, we see that as training. We will then refer you to CAD Learning. Now, CAD Learning is an online platform that we sell as well um, to our clients that you can then do on your own time. You pay a fee for the whole year, and then you'll have access, access to that specific, um, well, to all of the software that Autodesk sells, and then you can go, go and look at the, the question on your own time with the video and a description. And then some of the videos also has, uh, or have um, exercises that you can practice them on. Right. Then if you want to find us or get more information about upcoming webinars or presentations, you can go find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We load everything up there. You can stay updated on our pages there. All of our webinars are uploaded on our YouTube channel. So after this webinar, if you want to go look at it again or send it to someone or um, ask someone to look at the webinar, you can tell them to go to Baker Banks on YouTube and then you will see the uploaded webinar there. And um, yeah, that is it for me today, you guys. Thank you very, very much for joining this webinar. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you um, found it very informative and you should have a very nice afternoon further. Thank you.